to bring it back to kind of like what this sphere is, cryptocurrency. So the, the first core thing is the original cryptocurrency out there. And I'm sure everyone here that, you know, is listening to it that has interest uh, is Bitcoin. And essentially what Bitcoin leveraged is a technology that had been around for a few years prior, but no one had been able to integrate and come up with a system design quite like it before, essentially solving um, the non-sovereign immutable um, you know, store of record. So being able to store value, but also being a medium of exchange, it, you know, as well. So being able to solve all of those in one simplistic way was the first time that that's ever been able to do in recorded history, um, to my knowledge, and principally leveraging this public, verifiable, immutable, meaning you can't tamper with it, uh, database, which is known as the blockchain. So what you'll probably hear a lot whenever people are talking in buzzwords, blockchain this, blockchain that, that's what they're referring to is this public database um, that is immutable and it's just a verifiable record that just goes on and on and on. So Bitcoin, it has a huge, um, you know, blockchain database. What uh, the, the difference in, so, there's a couple ways that this space kind of gets broken down into there's cryptocurrencies, which originally were meant to be uh, fill a use case that I sort of talked about where we're seeing a lot in this particular year um, where governments are just sort of um, doing whatever they want to do and printing money, however they want to print money and allocate it wherever they want to, which is fine and dandy, especially whenever you're trying to stave off uh, a lot of economic carnage uh, that could result from a pandemic or has been happening from a pandemic. But there's always long-term ramifications and the long-term ramifications are this growing wealth divide um, between the haves and have-nots. There's several ways that that's sort of tied into and we can double click in it um, if you want to. But the more... Uh, clear and present is the diminished nature of your purchasing power. So if I've got a uh, hundred dollars in the bank, 10 years from now, I guarantee you that hundred dollars is not going to be able to buy the same amount of goods or services that it is today. And that was the principal thing that Bitcoin was, was trying to solve where it's not under the domain of any local government of the U S of, of the Eurozone or anything like that. And it is a fixed supply asset. There will only be ever 21 million uh, Bitcoin that are created and minted. So it is ultimately a disinflationary or a deflationary asset. So in theory, as demand picks up, supply will stay fixed. So price should be able um, to go up. That is the principle, like <laughs> genesis of cryptocurrency and this blockchain sphere. It's taken a bunch of different subsectors uh, to solve a bunch of different business problems. Um, and it falls under this umbrella that is now known as digital assets. Mm -hmm. So I'll pause there because we can start to go down a couple different rabbit holes, but hopefully that's a good enough kind of overview of the genesis, but also um, sort of like the a very high level evolution of the space as well.